Quiz time. Which nation currently holds territory in Europe, North America, and Asia? Survey said. First things first, we need to familiarize ourselves with Ant Society. There is a reason why there's more than one movie with these little guys as the main characters. Ants are incredibly complex. So much so that it's actually not that hard to relate to them once you learn a little bit about the way they operate. A single ant nest functions as one large family unit, with a massive number of ants all working together. Individuals in an ant colony have different jobs. They have chambers where they put their dead, just like our graveyards. They have nurseries for their babies, and they even milk aphids for their honeydew. And of course, every ant colony has at least one queen. Now, she isn't the queen in the sense that she tells everyone what to do. Rather, she's simply the one who gives birth to more citizens. But there are some criminals in the ant world who may try to also lay eggs. This is strictly forbidden for anyone who isn't the queen. Punishments can include corporal punishment and destroying the illegitimate eggs. That being said, the queen isn't a completely totalitarian dictator. Individual ants actually choose what job they want to do. Typically, they start off performing roles close to the queen, in the heart of the family, working in the nursery, whereas old ants are usually put on the front line. The colony also functions as a super organism to solve problems and make large colony-wide decisions. So ants have this complex society similar to humans in many ways, but the similarities run deeper and darker. Ant warfare is not unlike human warfare sometimes especially reminiscent of Nazi Germany's way of waging war, in that they gather up as large an army as they can muster and overwhelm the enemy as fast as possible, just like the Blitz. There's also the reasoning behind why ants fight. Typically, the battles are over a territory to acquire food, just like Lebensraum. So we have a highly organized society which engages in large-scale warfare. We can predict from our own history that this is a recipe for world domination. So how big can an ant colony get? Funny you should ask, because the answer to the question I asked at the top of the video is actually the global mega colony of Argentine ants. Now what is a mega colony? Well, it's a structure made up of super colonies, which is in itself a structure made up of colonies. Let me put it this way. If a colony is an ant city state, then a super colony is an ant country, and a mega colony is an ant empire. The mega colony in question today comprises of a 2.7 square kilometer super colony in Japan, a 900 square kilometer super colony in California, and two super colonies in Europe, which together add another 6,000 square kilometers to the total, which is now 6,903 square kilometers. There are also super colonies in Hawaii, New Zealand, and Australia, which are thought to be part of the mega colony. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the area of these super colonies. The European section of the mega colony alone consists of billions of ants, with millions of queens. It's so big that if this ant empire were a country, it would be the 163rd biggest in the world by area, right between Palestine and Cyprus. That might not sound that impressive, until you consider that the average Argentine ant is only 2.5 millimeters long, and that the average human is around 1.8 meters tall, making us 7200 times bigger than ants. And if their territory were 7200 times bigger, it would be around 49.7 million square kilometers, making it the biggest country in the world, almost three times bigger than Russia, and even bigger than the biggest empire in history, the British Empire. So what exactly leads us to believe that these super colonies around the world on different continents are in any way related? Well, scientists conducted research on individuals from the different super colonies, and they found that when they put ants from different colonies in the mega colony together, they never reacted aggressively. Now this is really strange, because typically ants don't like foreigners, and they typically react with aggression towards them which is consistent with a part of the research where Californian ants of the mega colony were tested by introducing them to members of another local super colony, and they found aggression 42 times out of 50 between them. This is as opposed to super colonies within the mega colony being introduced to each other, where they reacted aggressively 0 times out of 50, as if they were meeting an old friend. It should be noted that the only exception was that the Australian ants and Californian ants didn't like each other that much reacting aggressively four times out of 50. So ants may not be the simple creatures we often dismiss them as. They're actually very advanced as far as insects go, but they still pale in comparison to human civilization, obviously. 
but we might actually pale in comparison to other civilizations that could exist beyond Earth. Dr. Michio Kaku actually compared how we view ants to how an advanced alien species might view us. I discussed this in a previous very interesting video, which you can see here. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more weirdish education videos.